from the nation's capital, Eye on Washington with Merrilee Joyce. A weekly discussion about the federal issues most important to Nevada. And now, from Washington, D.C., here's Merrilee Joyce. And good day to you. I'm Marilee Joyce, and this is Eye on Washington, the only statewide Nevada news program produced in Washington, D.C. Every week, Eye on Washington takes you straight to Capitol Hill for a discussion with Nevada's delegation and other leaders about the federal matters that matter to you. Today's topic, the opioid crisis. We'll look at federal and state efforts to battle this serious and growing health menace, and we'll tell you how any person with an addiction can get help today. My special guest today is Dr. Anita Everett. She is the Chief Medical Officer at the Washington, D.C.-based Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, or SAMHSA. SAMHSA is within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It focuses on reducing the community impact of substance abuse. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Everett. Appreciate it. Well, according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, every day more than 90 Americans die after abu uh, overdosing on opioids, and Nevada is among the states with the heaviest rates of opioid prescriptions. And today on Eye on Washington, we'll learn what opioid addiction is and why the abuse and misuse of opioids continues to worsen in Nevada and nationally. We'll find out what's happening in the state and on the Hill in the opioid addiction battle. And we'll learn how you can seek help for your own or a loved one's addiction problem. Well, earlier this year, President Trump declared a state of emergency to combat the opioid crisis. For Nevada, this declaration should be a welcome one. The state has the fourth highest drug overdose mortality rate. Recent statistics cite 20.7% overdose death uh, per 100,000 residents. Nationally, opioid overdoses have quadrupled since 1999, according to the Centers for Disease Control. The agency says prescription opioids surpass all drugs tied to fatal overdoses. While opioid-related deaths are affected the whole state, the vast majority are occurring in Clark County. Last year, according to the coroner's office, there were 367 opioid-related deaths in the county. And the office reports in the past five years, the number has never dip below 300. Dr. Everett, first of all, welcome to Ion Washington. Appreciate you being Thank here. You. We're going to look at efforts on the Hill and in the state, uh, you know, legislatively to battle the growing crisis. But for this segment, I'd like you as an expert to just sort of give us a, a, an overview, some basics, what opioids are and why they are so commonly prescribed at a time when we have more and more overdoses occurring. Sure, yeah. So opioids are a grouping of, of uh, medications. Uh, one of the uh, um, s common street sort of uh, variants of the opioid product is heroin, uh, which we've always had some degree of problem with. But what's happened more recently, and the reason this has risen to the surface, is the, the uh, increased use of uh, prescription-based uh, opioids, Oxycontin, Roxycontin, uh, Percocet, agents like that that include sure. in the opioid family of medications. And um, s many years ago, um, we became, we the medical profession became somewhat uh, more interested in uh, managing pain in a much tighter way. We're, we're sort of oriented toward pain as a fifth vital sign uh, with patients. And so that is one of the reason that there's been what now many of us consider to be over prescribing or sort of prescribing where it may not be necessary of the opioids and why so many are mixed in. Um, and available today for, for individuals. You to said use. fifth vital sign. What does that mean? Would you help? So yeah, so normally we collect things when we're when we're accounting for the daily status of individuals. We collect their temperature, their blood pressure, their pulse, their breathing oh. rate, and so uh, it became sort of part of the culture of medical settings of what to you include measure. pain measurement okay. as a, a pain assessment okay. of uh, a, 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 the baseline of patients on a daily basis. So why are they so commonly prescribed when things are it seems getting so serious as far as the overdosing? So we're, we've been, the whole last generation of medical professionals has been driven towards sort of alleviating pain uh, mm. and not so much countered with the experience of addiction. And just, and just more recently has it become that, uh, known that these agents are much more addictive, they have much more addictive potential than uh, was originally sort of thought. Uh, how commonly are they prescribed? Uh, can this be correct? I read that in Nevada, doctors reported giving 94 painkiller prescriptions for every 100 patients. 
it's pretty phenomenal. Of 94 course, out of 100. Of course, it's all over the map, and so many people in that would be clustered around many more prescriptions and some uh, never. Okay. But it happens commonly. Uh, my 90-year-old mother recently had a knee replacement and was given multiple refills of large amounts of uh, opioid pain relievers, mm -hmm. um, which she didn't really use, and she has the written prescription still at home. So it's it's an example of, sure. that's a pretty classic example of someone, you know, a situation after surgery uh, having more medications than they needed access to in the thinking we're serving the best interest of the patients to not have the pain, but it can be problematic if you're, you know, use those medicines. Yeah, and not to overshare with my audience, but years ago I had some bad dental pain and they put me on Vicodin and I was on it, I don't know, several days. I, I could have stayed on it, but I could feel there was something going on that I wanted more, so I stopped it. I was able to say, I, I, I'm going to take some Tylenol. Um, and I can certainly emphasize, because there is something that happens in the brain, uh, at least if you're susceptible to it, that wants you, makes you want more and more of this type of drug. What happens? That's right. We And we don't know all the details of every chemical thing that happens, but it does sort of, it does activate the pleasure centers of the brain, and it makes, it makes individuals feel like life is just better when you're on uh, the medicine. It's not a a thing that usually takes you on uh, uh, robustly, it kind of sneaks in and you just notice that things go better when you're on your, your medication. And then it's easy to stay on it and then after you've been on it for a little while, when you stop taking it, there's a sort of an unhappiness, sort of a mm. reality, sort of life's not so great kind of thing that really fuels the addiction uh, moving forward. Okay, we're gonna pick that up on the other side uh, when we return the science of opioid dependence and the signs that someone might be misusing. That's just ahead. You're watching Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, brought to you by Caesars Entertainment, the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, the Las Vegas Sands Corporation, the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, NB Energy, Jim Marsh Automotive, the Rogich Communications Group, and Renown Health. I have three tests next week. I'm going to be studying all weekend. Oh. Are you studying tonight? We can meet up and study together. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. What time? Um, I work until 6. Okay, sounds good. Just text me after. Okay. No! There is no text, tweet, or call that's worth a life. One pedestrian death is one too many. Look up. And look out for each other. Want more federal news that affects Nevada, its businesses, and its residents? Then you need to subscribe to Nevada's Washington Watch Newsletter, your sole source of online news direct from Washington, D.C. Visit JoyceCommunications.com and subscribe today. Planet Hollywood, Paris, Paris, Caesar's Palace, it's one of the most exciting skylines in the world, Las Vegas. Caesars Entertainment has nearly 50 casinos worldwide, including these. But no matter which casino you visit, we want you to play responsibly. And if you need help setting or keeping a limit, we hope you'll call this number. You see, we know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. <laughs> um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little buggy on it. <laughs> Welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of the opioid crisis in Nevada and nationally. Our very special guest today is Dr. Anita Everett. She is the Chief Medical Officer at the Washington, D.C.-based Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. So let's look more closely now at why opioids can be addictive and what you can do to help someone that you suspect might be abusing them. Opioids are a class of drugs that include the illegal drug heroin, synthetic opioids such as fentanyl and pain relievers available legally by prescription. Medical officials say that any long-term use can be uh, put someone at risk of addiction even if the substance is used as prescribed and that many people who use opioids will develop a tolerance to them. That's a phenomenon that can trigger the cycle of addiction. So how do you know if someone you care
care about might be misusing. Well, according to the nonprofit addiction resource site uh, Shatterproof, some things to watch for include changes in mood and behavior, drowsiness and disorientation, slower movements, and slurred speech. Now, doctor, I mentioned that doctors cite this cycle of addiction. Uh, could you tell us more about what this means and, and why it often happens with this class of drugs? Yes, uh, as we were talking about earlier, the drugs have a feeling of making people feel, we call it euphoria, or sort of a certain state of, of happiness, a sort of an elevated uh, feeling. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and when the effect of the drug wears off, um, it, it the, uh, unhappiness or sort of part of the withdrawal from the drug uh, is often associated and so people it, it reinforces itself uh -huh. people continue to take uh, more and more and uh, what happens physiologically or in the body is the body gets used to a certain amount and it takes more to bring about that feeling and so there is what what you described as tolerance happens fairly commonly uh, and so it takes increasing amounts to uh, has the same have the same effect would you help our audience understand the, the I guess the, the difference or, or the graduation I guess uh, from we, we go from pain relievers to synthetics to illegal drugs in other words is it common to go from say codeine Tylenol 3 codeine to heroin um, well, it, we don't know exactly how common it is, but it's certainly common, and it's certainly also something that we've been concerned about um, professionally. As we've, as we've had uh, the CDC guidelines and many other uh, state-level guidelines that have restricted uh, the, the number of prescriptions, they have different strategies that states have used to restrict the number of uh, pills, actually, that can be written. Mm -hmm. Guidelines call for treatment even after se fairly severe surgery. It should be no more than five to seven days. But uh, so doctors are sort of decreasing the larger amounts of medicines that they used to get, and we have grave concern that people who are stuck or addicted on these medications will turn to street drugs as the medical management of the drugs uh, is, is tighter or tightens up. You know, speaking of that medical management, is it, uh, how are people who are addicted to opioids, how are they continuing to get the drugs from doctors? In other words, are doctors too busy to pay attention to how long someone's been on something? Is it true this, you know, the rumors we hear about that there's a phrase called doctor shopping, mm -hmm. et cetera. Tell and, us about that. pill mills, right, and so many of which have been, you know, shut down or sort of looked at, but there is a whole range of available, you know, of the way uh, physician offices manage refills and uh, medications and things like that, all of which I think it's fair to say is tightening up, but there still is, uh, you know, a looser uh, availability of these medications in an interest really of sure. you know managing pain but it gets to be it gets to be um, it can get out of control very easily what does uh, SAMHSA recommend is done about that pill mills and over -prescri prescribing etc yeah so we recommend that the doctors follow the guidelines to the extent that they can the um, the guidelines that have to do with the use of uh, these highly addictive medications for much shorter periods of time that they're very aware of that and also that they encourage uh, individuals to use alternative methods and so sometimes it feels like we've skipped over other common uh, pain relievers like uh, Tylenol or like aspirin or mm -hmm. the nonsteroidal uh, medications, um, and we need to kind of use those as as much as we can so we don't develop, you know, addiction. So just to be clear, if you're opioid, uh, you're you're uh, addicted, and uh, your opioid's no longer having the same effect as it as it once did, do people routinely take more and more? Yes. of the substance and is that what places you at the greatest risk of overdose? Yes, and that's one of the things that we worry about in comparison to say another product of addiction alcohol which can become addictive, you know, over time. Typically the course of alcohol will be a much smaller, uh, a much slower sort of longer course and the risk of alcohol overdose is not quite as great. With uh, the opioids, uh, the risk factor involves uh, basically shutting down the breathing, the command center in the base of your brain that, that has to do with breathing. And so when you get to a certain dose, you can easily jump over the dose. The deaths themselves have uh, commonly been associated with um, uh, all street medications that are bought uh, and are laced uh, oh. with these particular fentanyl and uh, carfentanyl uh, agents, which are sometimes even described as poisons almost because they're so much more potent. They uh, are oftentimes related to the shutting down of the breathing, which is why a person sort of becomes kind But of even the, as uh, medications that are not cut would kill you if you They can't. Yes, they certainly can. So that was happening before. Okay. And certainly street heroin. We don't know. It's very unpredictable what's okay. in that. And when we return, federal and state efforts in the opioid crisis battle. That's coming up next. The 
Nevada's direct link to Capitol Hill. Eye on Washington with Merrilee Joyce. The only statewide Nevada news show based in Washington, D.C. All the top federal matters that matter most to Nevadans. Merrilee talks with our congressional delegation and other leaders about the federal news you need to know. Eye on Washington with Merrilee Joyce. Nevada's Eye on Capitol Hill. When you think RTC, what comes to mind? How about jobs? RTC road projects bring thousands of jobs to Washoe County, expanding and connecting Northern Nevada, growing our local economy, providing a more secure future for our residents and their families. So when you think jobs, think RTC. Your RTC, the RTC of Washoe County. We're not a miracle drug. We're not a technology. We're not doctors. Just the hope, which can often be the best cure of all. The Ronald McDonald House, a home away from home for seriously ill children and their families. Planet Hollywood, Paris, Paris, Caesar's Palace. It's one of the most exciting skylines in the world, Las Vegas. Caesar's Entertainment has nearly 50 casinos worldwide, including these. But no matter which casino you visit, we want you to play responsibly. And if you need help setting or keeping a limit, we hope you'll call this number. You see, we know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. Safety, we all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of the opioid crisis and what's happening on the Hill and in the state to combat it. My special guest today has been Dr. Anita Everett. She is the Chief Medical Officer at the Washington, D.C.-based Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, or SAMHSA. Officials say six of 10 drug overdoses involve opioid use, so we know the severity of the problem. Let's now get to the battle to defeat it. This segment, we're gonna look at federal and state efforts, and next segment, how it's treated and where to find help today. In August, Nevada was awarded $1.2 million in federal grant money on top of the $8.4 million previously received to help fight the opioid epidemic. It is aimed at identifying those at risk, early intervention, and treatment services. Meanwhile, on the Hill, the most recent example of the Nevada delegation effort include the roundtable on the crisis led in August by Nevada U.S. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto, as well as her July joining of 16 senators urging the DEA to better prevent painkillers from flooding the market by lowering opioid production quotas. And more generally on the Hill, the group Advocates for Recovery was founded in July of last year by former House Speaker Newt Gingrich and others with the goal of educating leaders on what they call evidence-based treatment as well as, quote, removing the stigma surrounding addiction, breaking down regulatory, legislative, and ideological barriers that prevent access to evidence-based treatment and ensuring that opioid addiction is treated like any other disease. Dr. Everett, I, I, I know you're not a politician, but um, in your medical opinion, is enough being done legislatively to battle this crisis? And, and what would you like to be uh, see done resource funding wise, et cetera, on the Hill? Yeah, what, what, what a message that's important to us to have people understand is that treatment works. Um, we have a series of evidence-based treatments that work and um, uh, uh, that that are very uh, can be very useful in managing uh, the addiction that's associated with these opioid products. And so, what I my wish would be that we have enough resources so that anyone who uh, who wants treatment is at a point where they uh, would benefit from treatment would be able to access treatment. And really that's the thrust of a lot of the legislation broadly is to get money out to the states um, 
to create more access to treatment? You know, a lot is being done in, in Nevada. I, in 2015, the legislature have uh, voted to reduce potential criminal penalties for people who re, uh, report uh, drug overdoses. Also made uh, naloxone, that's a drug that can help reverse mm -hmm. opioid overdoses, more accessible. Last year, uh, Nevada Governor Sandoval, uh, he had an opioid summit uh, and that led to a bill that would impose new uh, restrictions on doctors and pharmacists prescribing pain medication, also enhanced tracking mechanisms. I mentioned uh, uh, Senator Cortez Masto's work and the most recent I saw in my research, but I'm, uh, and I'm, uh, want to emphasize as well, I'm sure the whole delegation takes that very seriously. I'm just giving one senator's example. But since Nevada is the top state uh, or one of the top states, rather, for opioid deaths. What would you like to see the delegation push more uh, for in, in, in here in D.C. to turn those numbers around? Well, I think we are getting to a point where there's recognition that this is a complex problem. It's not, you know, there is no single uh, effort that's going to that correct or, you know, reverse the problem. It, there, we have every hope that, that we will be able to turn things around with a whole series of things that have to do with control of the supplies um, and, and also getting people who need treatment access access to treatment. So we, we, we were really, at SAMHSA, one of the things that we emphasize is the treatment aspect. Does your organization get federal funding? How are, how are you guys, uh, we, how do you We are going? a federal agency, right. Yeah, that's what I, I had said earlier, you're part of the, the U.S. Department, yeah. Correct, yeah. Okay. Um, is enough funding going out to organizations like yours? There always could be more resources to manage a problem broadly. We've got a lot going on right now, and we've set a lot of things in motion with the first uh, amount of money that we've had from Congress and we'll be doing over the next year. And so it's, it's part of the situation and the complexity is being able to do it over time. And so we'll be looking at that uh, and working with the resources that we're given to help make sure that you know it's used as well as possible. Okay. It's, public stewards of the money. And when we return, getting help today, my guest has hope for you or a loved one fighting addiction. We have details and resources coming up. Planet Hollywood, Paris, Paris, Caesar's Palace. It's one of the most exciting skylines in the world, Las Vegas. Caesar's Entertainment has nearly 50 casinos worldwide, including these. But no matter which casino you visit, we want you to play responsibly. And if you need help setting or keeping a limit, we hope you'll call this number. You see, we know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time, and we always want you to leave feeling like you did. Nevada's direct link to Capitol Hill. Eye on Washington with Merrilee Joyce. The only statewide Nevada news show based in Washington, D.C. All the top federal matters that matter most to Nevadans. Merrily talks with our congressional delegation and other leaders about the federal news you need to know. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. Nevada's Eye on Capitol Hill. I got my own iPod Touch and used my dad's login to get on gambling sites. Poker is the best, but I'm losing a lot. Since I'm too young to play, they're not allowed to keep the money and my dad won't find out. That's right, isn't it? Are you studying tonight? We can meet up and study together. There is no text, tweet, or call that's worth a life. One pedestrian death is one too many. Look up. And look out for each other. This girl is very pretty. It's inciting feelings of jealousy in me. We should pick on her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm insecure about some things, so I think we should put some new stuff on here. Maybe even some lies, too. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to be accepted by you both. So I'm going to send this to my friends so they think I'm cool. <laughs> Kids bully for all kinds of reasons. None of them are good. Find ways to get involved at flipthescriptnow.org. <laughs> Want more federal news that affects Nevada, its businesses, and its residents? Then you need to subscribe to Nevada's Washington Watch Newsletter, your sole source of online news direct from Washington, D.C. Visit JoyceCommunications.com and subscribe today. 
And we're back with our closing and today our most important segment of Ion Washington. We've had as our special guest today, Dr. Anita Everett. She is the Chief Medical Officer at the Washington DC based Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. So the part that matters most, what do you do if you or a loved one needs help today? Well, there are too many Nevada treatment centers to list here. So I instead am going to give you a few numbers to call right now. The officials at these places can quickly get you in touch with state facilities ready to help you today. Addiction to sobriety, 877-810-0397. Aid in recovery, 877-775-9337. Narconon, 888-407-3542. And of course, my guest's organization, that is SAMHSA, it's 800 662 HELP or 4357. Again, 800 662 HELP 4357. These are among the several national organizations that will lead you to licensed centers in Nevada. If you or a loved one needs help, please call today. Please call now. Doctor, uh, again, this is the most important segment, uh, and I uh, did want to ask you I, I know you, you've emphasized several times on our program today helping people right now, emphasizing treatments available, and there's a lot of hope. What's step one for the person who's addicted? I make the call or reach out to somebody that can help you get into treatment and, and realize yourself that you want to get help for the problem and, and knowing yourself that treatment can work. Um, the most effective kinds of treatment that we recommend are medication assisted treatment. Everybody's life is different, everybody's path is different, and so not everybody requires that level of treatment, but that is the most effective, it's the best shot uh, at staying sober and, and regaining uh, life. And that's really what we want. Addiction robs you of your life and capacity to function normally, and um, uh, getting treatment can really help you get back sort of into the swing of life and, and carry on with things as and you And we can't like. emphasize enough if you're hurting, call today. Call turn it turn it around. Um, yeah, not to be sappy, but this is people are dying. It's um, pit, that's right. Again, uh, call SAMHSA 800-662 HELP. 800-662-4357. Dr. Everett, thanks so much for being here today. I hope we can help some people. Thank you. Appreciate it. And as we close out, let me repeat the SAMHSA phone number and their website address. It's 800-662-HELP or 4357. Or you can visit SAMHSA.gov and that is S-A-M-H-S-A dot gov. Again, if you or a loved one is struggling with opioid addiction or for that matter, any substance abuse problem, we hope you will reach out today. And meanwhile, if you want more information on any federal issue that impacts you in Nevada, you can visit our website. Website. It's JoyceCommunications.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter and catch up with any shows you may have missed on our YouTube page. Thanks so much for joining us on Ion Washington. I'm Marilee Joyce in Washington, D.C. Have a great day. Thank you for watching Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce. Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce airs statewide in Nevada solely due to the generosity of our sponsors. If your company can support our program, please visit JoyceCommunications.com slash sponsor to learn more about becoming a sponsor today.